I think we're there. Um, all right, so today's topic for our parlor car chat, thanks you all for uh, joining in today, is a um, motor car, or also referred to as speeders, excursion that I took with the uh, Motor Car Operators West group, which is a um, multi-state on the West Coast group of uh, speeder owners that travel around running their cars on um, various railroads that will let them do that. And soon after I moved to Colorado in 2017, um, Bill Shirtle, who is a uh, um, deeply involved in speeders in this particular group, uh, Motor Car Operators West, invited me to join him um, on the, what they called the Fall Colorado Colors excursion or something to that effect. And as you'll soon see in the pictures, we did enjoy a lot of fall color uh, running around the various railroads in um, Colorado. So let me uh, give you a, oh, and I should mention too, this you see in the upper left-hand corner uh, an, an, an online address for this the, the Motor Car Operators West website. All the website addresses that we'll see or talk about <clears throat> or organizations, the links to those will be on the parlor car page well, where this thing is talked about. Um, and uh, the recording to it will also be there too for later on. I, usually it takes me several hours or most of the rest of the day to get that video up, but it'll be up there uh, pretty soon. So, okay, let's um, orient ourselves in terms of the uh, where we're going on this trip today. So here we are in Colorado, the upper right-hand corner of the mostly white box or very light colored is um, the state of Colorado. And um, <clears throat> in the red box, bottom center, is pretty much the area where we're going to be dealing with. You can see we're uh, almost to the New Mexico border. And um, not on this particular map is Leadville, which is going to be our first uh, run. It's, it's to the north of this particular section of map. You can see the word Leadville up in the upper left-hand corner, roughly. And an arrow pointing north, Leadville is up there. We're going to be centered around Alamosa um, for the bulk of this trip, which took a week to do, by the way. Um, so that's that's what, what we're doing. Okay, uh, now we're going to start in Leadville. Uh, let me get it over there. We're going to start with the Leadville, Colorado and Southern Railroad, um, which the, its location on the right, in the map on the right, um, you can see it's well into the mountains west of Denver and Colorado Springs. You see Colorado Springs there at the very lower right-hand corner of that far right map. And it's about, I think it took about two and a half hours to drive there from Colorado Springs. And um, <clears throat> Leadville, uh, as you may know, um, like most of the towns in uh, I should have uh, Colorado, particularly in the mountains, started out all about silver and gold in the 1800s. I'm going to go back to the map a, a second and get us oriented even further because we won't be back to the map, I don't think. On the left-hand side, um, you get sort of a, an aerial view of the entire line that we're going to be running, which runs from Leadville down in the lower left-hand corner and follows this um, valley, Arkansas River Valley, uh, all the way up and around to the Climax Mine, which is all of this stuff at the top. Following Highway 91, if, if you, you can kind of see there's a road there, the very light colored, that's Highway 91. The railroad <clears throat> sort of hugs the cliff, if you were, if you uh, sort of speak, that 
runs along the divide between the forested area, the dark green, and the not so forested area, light tan or light green. Uh, <clears throat> so it's up the hill from the highway, generally speaking, and, and that seems or holds true all the way up to the mine. So uh, where we were just a minute ago was with this picture of Leadville in the mid 1800s. I can see some mining activity in the background. I think that's a hotel of some sort uh, in the the on the right in the foreground. And here we are at uh, Leadville, Colorado, and Southern Railroad. At least the way it looked in 2017. Um, and you can see there one of the tourist trains already put together. In fact, there's some people on that first uh, open car right behind the locomotive. It's a pretty neat run that you can take. I don't know how many times they do it a day, at least twice, I think. Um, and they have various accommodations inside and outside and so on. We'll see some of those pictures as we go along here. This is a, an old locomotive um, from the Colorado and Southern. It, it sits on display there at the um, station, you might say, where the Leadville Colorado and Southern trip start from. And here's the station and um, gift shop and so on is inside there for people who are taking the train on that day or whatever day they're doing it. Now we'll start getting into the uh, uh, motor car operation itself, the speeders. This was by far the largest um, speeder actually I've ever seen. And and um, but certainly the largest one on this particular excursion. And interestingly enough, it came from the furthest distance the other way, uh, meaning this is an East Coast guy, I think from Massachusetts, um, but definitely, I'm not sure if I remember Massachusetts part right, but it's definitely East Coast um, where they came from. And you can see the rig it took to haul that thing to the middle of the country. It was pretty impressive. Here's the old roundhouse at uh, Colorado or Leadville, Colorado and Southern. It was just a kind of a general thought of the group starting to get their uh, speeders all set to go. I should have mentioned that um, uh, Leadville is, a, is a just over 10,000 feet elevation, um, so pretty high, two miles roughly. <clears throat> and we're going up to the Climax Mine, which is over 11,000 feet, so it's uh, quite a little bit of a climb. Um, interestingly enough, on that route, or actually from Leadville even, there's a number of Colorado 14ers, what they refer to as 14ers, any mountain peak that's over 14,000 feet. There's actually several of them uh, visible from Leadville. And at the time when Leadville started out in the 1800s, it was the second most populous city in Colorado, behind only Denver. <clears throat> The uh, railroad that we're talking about, the uh, what's now the Leadville, Colorado and Southern, is actually a sort of a conglomeration or its history involved two, two other railroads, the Denver, South Park and Pacific, and then also the Colorado and Southern, not with the word Leadville in front. Um, and of course, they, the whole point of it was to get up to the Climax Mine and haul stuff out of there. Um, back in the day. Okay, let's keep going here. Another nice shot of the speeders all lining up. 
It's quite an operation to do what they call the set on, set off. Get all the speeders off the trailers, um, get them to the uh, tracks, which hopefully you can put the trailer right next to, and then uh, get ready to go. It's, it's quite a little bit of operation. And then by the, when everybody's ready to go and the cars are all set on the rails, um, before the group ever heads out, um, they, there's a safety briefing, which is a typical railroad operation um, no matter what you're doing. A railroad crew will have a safety briefing. This whole group has a safety briefing. And uh, it's, you know, typically, the, what are you going to encounter? <clears throat> are there any problem spots? Do you have to walk your cars across any switches? Um, uh, like today, uh, there, or this day on the uh, um, excursion, the speeder cars are going to be intermixed with regular train traffic on the railroad. Now, that doesn't always occur. Many times you get a day where there's nothing happening on the railroad, or you might be running on tracks that haven't been used other than occasional speeder groups or something for years. And you don't have to worry about train meets and all that sort of stuff. But on this day, we were running along with or behind or in front uh, regular uh, tourist trains. So there was a, you know, it adds to the complication a little bit, and we had to uh, make sure we were out of way and all that good stuff. And there's just a picture of the, some folks heading out on the on their tourist train while we were getting ready to head out on the speeders. Another little operation to make sure the right group is in the right spot. And here starts the trip up the up the hill to the climax mine. It really was as pretty as that looks, and it was like that all the time. The the road that we talked about, Highway 91, is off to the left. Down downhill is off to the left, and then eventually you get to the bottom where the Arkansas River is and where that highway is. <clears throat> and to the right of the track is uphill. Same is true here. And there's a, there's a picture of Bill. Bill Shirtle was my host for this uh, trip. He and I had his car to ourselves. It's a four-seater, but there was only two of us, so it was quite the wide-open view. And there's Highway 91 down there at the at the bottom in the valley as we're scooting uphill to the Climax Mine. There are a lot of spots where uh, an area for the tracks to run through were uh, literally cut out of the side of the mountain. Um, this is one of them that the yellow speeder there is right alongside and the the closer speeder is just about to get to where some some rock removal was required in order to put the track in there and uh, here we are the the whole group has made it now we're, we're pretty much at the end of the line in fact that far guy down there in the middle of the picture he might actually be literally at the end of the line, uh, which is just before the Climax Mine. The Climax Mine is um, kind of down and to the left, at least most of the buildings and infrastructure are. Um, that peak that you see in the upper left is probably part of it too, although I'm not entirely sure about that. But we're very close. And here um, is some of that structure that I was uh, talking about. Um, of the Climax Mine, which is an, a molybdenum, lib, molybdenum mine. I'll try and say that real fast. Um, the mineral was discovered here um, in way back when, um, 1879 or something like that, um, and discovered by someone who didn't know what it was. It was a few years later before he actually well, locate a chemist who could identify it. 
Um, and eventually, of course, people became aware of what it was, what it was worth as an industrial metal, that sort of thing. And the mine was put in place and first production occurred in 1915. So what is that roughly 35 years later? It only ran for about four, mi uh, four years uh, in that period, starting in 1915, and closed in 1919 when World War I ended, which is was primary. Uh, the, the war effort was the primary user of the molybdenum product. Um, it reopened in 1924, and at its highest output um, between then and 1995, when it shut down again. The Climax mine was the largest molybdenum mine in the world and produced as much as 75% of the world's supply many of those years from 1924 to 1995. It closed again in um, 1995 uh, because of low prices, low demand. Um, and it did reopen, um, I think we're going to talk about that later, but while I'm thinking about it, it did reopen a few years la later, like 2013, 2014, but I'm not entirely sure what's going on up there now. It may have been reopened for other things or minimal activity, I, I just don't, I'm just not sure. Okay, here's an interesting little thing, if you're not familiar with these motor cars or these speeders. Um, this is a turntable that has come out from underneath the motor car so that it can be lifted off the rail. You can see that the wheels are off the rail and spun on that turntable so that you can turn it around and head the other direction. Now these cars are not unlike railroad locomotives which are perfectly happy going either direction. I think these cars are too. But it's still nice to have the seats facing forward and that sort of thing. So this is a very typical way of, um, of turning these cars so you can go back the other direction. If you don't happen to have a turntable on your uh, speeder, it's no problem. Um, there's general handles that can be pulled out and uh, if you get a couple of three guys to help you do it, it's, you, everybody just lifts it up, swings it around, sets it back down. And here's a, as we head, now we're headed back down uh, the hill, back to Leadville. We're just leaving the, I mean, we're barely gotten started. We're just leaving the Climax Mine area. And I uh, put on the side there a, a picture of an interesting mineral that uh, came out of the Climax Mine area. That's a rhodochrosite crystal, the pink, um, on a quartz crystal, the, the white, on the far right of the picture. Um, Rhodochrosite is a, it, I'm, not, I'm not sure if it's Colorado mineral or not, but it's, um, it's a very popular source for museum quality specimens of Rhodochrosite. Um, we didn't happen to see any while we were up there, but that's okay. The mine, by the way, um, produced other things besides molybdenum, um, also tungsten, tin, um, pyrite, but the overall yield um, was pretty low. It's only about a 1% yield. They, you know, for every 100 tons of rock they processed, they only got one ton of, of uh, valuable minerals. So that's, that's pretty low. It, it was a big mine. So that's how it worked. You had to process a lot of material. This was right along the tracks from that scene we just saw. If you look down to the right from any of those cars, you would have seen this, which is the headwaters of the Arkansas River. Now, it may not be exact spot. I mean, there might be more uphill from here that I didn't happen to spot, but, but we are there. And here we go down the hill. That's Highway 91 again. You can see the quote unquote Colorado fall colors on the other side of the valley. It was pretty spectacular. 
Another shot of the valley, kind of looking down along the road. You can see the river starting in the lower right, following the valley down as well. There's a little bit more of it. It gets harder to see as you go around the point here. Okay, now we're back at Leadville at the railroad headquarters, and we're jockeying around. Uh, we made two trips this day up to the mine and back. This is basically the conclusion of the first trip, and or somewhere between the conclusion of the first trip and the start of the second, where we were kind of jockeying around to get our position um, either in front or behind the tourist train. I forget wh what we did. We probably followed them, or maybe we led them up and they and followed them down. I'm not sure. I don't remember. Um, but that's what's going on here. Jockeying for position. There's a nice shot of the tourist train before it turning their car on a turntable. There is a turntable under there, but you can also see the, the handles that I was talking about are, are like these red things right in front of this guy. Those can be pulled out and basically uh, used to pick the car up. Uh, the cars that don't have turntables definitely have those. Um, cars that do have turntables probably have them as well because in case your turntable fails or it's a good grip to, to swing the car with, that sort of thing. Another nice shot as we cruise through the countryside. Or hillside, I guess would be a better way to put it. Now we're back up at the mine again, on the second trip, or approaching it anyway, I should say. You can see in the background, these buildings are part of the mine infrastructure. And you can see digging, um, terracing of the hillside, and so on, to, for, from the processing of all the material. You can I also see in this picture how slope, what kind of slope this that we're on here, this, the side of this mountain. Um, it, it that's uh, it, at least a 30 degree slope might be pushing 45, and it's uh, equally steep on the other side going down. <coughs> There's the other side going down. Taking a little break chatting with each other as we uh, work our way, uh, looks like we're working our way up the hill at this point. The mine is back behind us and slightly to the right. Up oh, and there it is. Now we're looking in the direction most of the cars are pointing, which is the way we're going. And there's the mine in the background, kind of upper right. And now we're, I think we're pretty much back up at the end of the line, right at the mine. This area down in here is where you saw that picture of the headwaters of the Arkansas River. It's, it's down in here somewhere. Gorgeous countryside. And there's the end of the line. This, this stop, railroad stop, is literally the end of the line. That's as close as you can get to the Climax Mine on on this railroad. Heading back down. About halfway along the railroad, I think, as, as best I recall, uh, there's a stop that the tourist train makes. And uh, it's got a water tower, as you can see there, um, easy steps for access on and off the cars, um, some displays. I can see a, a firebox, it looks like, uh, for a steam locomotive here. And over here, a, a mining cart. I think there's a, yeah, there's a close-up picture of the mining cart. Information about the railroad. It's a pretty popular trip. And there were plenty of people on board the day we were there. Obviously, they're not on board right now. They're all off walking around looking at stuff. <clears throat> There's some good shots of the speeders. Once the train left, um, 
the speeders pulled up to the spot and uh, we took our time taking pictures and enjoying the same thing that the tourist folks had just looked at. As I recall, there were some berries along the line, like blackberries or raspberries or something, which uh, we sampled a few of. Just a beautiful, beautiful trip. Interesting railroad. I think this is the picture I used on the listing on the Parlor Car Chats page for this talk. Colorado Aspens. Okay, now we're shifting gears. Um, we have packed up the speeders, <clears throat> got them on the trailers, and spent the night maybe, or headed on down to Alamosa. I forget if we spent another night in Leadville or not, or just came right down to Alamosa. Uh, and, and to reorient ourselves, <clears throat> this is the map that we looked at at the very beginning. Um, the map on the left is basically a blow up of the map in red, the square in red on the little map in the upper right hand corner. And in this circle, the red circle on the bigger map, is what <clears throat> part of the trip we're going to do next. Alamosa, which is sort of the headquarters, you might say, for the railroad that we're on, which, by the way, is the San Luis and Rio Grande Railroad. And I'll explain the San Luis part here in a bit, but um, it's kind of funny. It doesn't have Ordo Obispo in it, but it's pretty close. <clears throat> uh, San Luis and Rio Grande Railroad. Alamosa is sort of their headquarters or center spot. And on this first leg of the of traveling on the SL and RG, we're going to head down to Antonito, which is in the lower part of that red circle, um, home of or one of the terminus points for the Cumbres and Toltec steam uh, tourist train. So uh, let's go on with that. This is a closer up of that same red circle, basically, from Alamosa down to San San S to Antonito, not San Antonito. And in that red circle, too, this would be a good spot to point it out. <laughs> that uh, area is basically San Luis Valley, they call it. Um, so it's surrounded by mountains, pretty much, um, and it, the river runs through it, quote unquote, uh, top to bottom, I think. And it goes on into New Mexico. That little white dashed line at the bottom is, is New Mexico. <clears throat> and this is the San Luis Valley. I always thought that was kind of interesting. But very much like San Luis Obispo. And like, not unlike San Luis Obispo, um, there are sand dunes here uh, in this valley. This is just uh, north and east of Alamosa, our headquarters, you might say, for this portion of the trip. This is called the Great Sand Dunes National Park and Preserve. Um, and interestingly enough, we had enough rain. I don't know if it was this spring or the spring last year. But enough rain fell here that people were actually surfing on these sand dunes. The water was running through them and coming out at the bottom. And you could actually surf across, uh, not necessarily surfboards with, with uh, rudders and stuff sticking down, but if you had a flat board or a, like an inner tube, I guess you could. Uh, here's uh, uh, the picture was taken from the spot where the speeders were setting on, um, and kind of getting our bearings and, and looking at stuff. The train that we're looking at is the um, Rio Grande Scenic Railroad, which is a subsidiary of the San Luis and Rio Grande Railroad. And they run a tourist train from, uh, from Alamosa East to La Vida and back over to La Vida Pass, which we'll talk about later. We'll do that too, or at least we'll get it started today. So here's the set on and uh, organizational stuff, getting the speeders ready to go on our first trip out of Alamosa on the San Luis and Rio Grande down to Antonito.
there's that same Elamosa uh, hotel slash train station, whatever. I forget exactly what that is there. I think it's now a visitor center, chamber, chamber of commerce thing. And maybe the headquarters for the railroad too. There's that big speeder we I mentioned back when, I think it seats six or eight, at least eight people actually, is big. Uh, there's a lot of stuff, uh, railroad stuff at Alamosa on the San Luis Rio Grande. They've got old cars in various conditions. Uh, I'm not sure quite what they'll do with eventually. There's the Alamosa water tower just down the tracks a little bit. There, there's the uh, plaque on the building where we saw that Alamosa sign, the, the Denver and Rio Grande Railroad Depot, built in 1908. And inside, this was cool, this is just a slice off the back end of the Denver and Rio Grande boxcar, apparently, that's mounted on the wall inside the visitor center. It, it, that's a neat display, I thought. And now we're on the line heading down to Antonito. Um, through that bridge, we're looking to the south, generally speaking. And uh, we're out in the middle of the valley, so this is not quite as picturesque a trip um, as when you're up in the mountains. Uh, it's pretty flat, uh, a lot of farmland. <clears throat> and you'll, we'll see a few pictures of inter what I thought was interesting things along the way. But like I said, it's, it's kind of flat. And we finally get to Antonito, um, home, or the home of the Cumbres and Toltec steam tourist train. Um, and by the way, um, I will probably do one of these chats uh, solely on the Cumbres and Toltec Railroad. Um, I've taken two trips on it so far. Have I've been in Colorado a few years. And one of them, I took uh, one of the grandkids, Mateo, with me. And uh, they, they have an annual special that they run. It's a geology train. And we take literally all day just to get down to Chama, which is the other end point of this railroad. No time to come back. They just bus us back because we wouldn't have time to do that. Spend all day on the railroad going down there, stopping at various uh, spots where there are geologic points of interest. And it was fascinating. So if uh, watch that on the schedule, um, we'll share uh, a train ride on the Cumbres and Toltec as well as the geologic interest along the, along the railroad between here and Chama, New Mexico. There's a close up of the station. Then the water tower. And uh, we managed to get there down there in time. That was part of the plan. We left Alamosa early enough that we would be in Antonito uh, for the first departure of the day uh, from there. And here it is. You can see it coming out of the station on the left and heading on down the track after it passed where I was positioned on the right. Heading on down to Chama. And there it's really on its way. It was a kind of an impressive sight. And I'm sorry there's no sound here, but the sound was pretty. I mean, we, uh, there was a bunch of us uh, from the speeder group standing on top of a, a pile of something. I don't remember if it was dirt or coal or what. Um, <clears throat> but it was probably got us up. It got us up higher than the train itself. Maybe one and a half times the height of the train, maybe two times. A great vantage point. It went right by us. That and or just not being used at the moment uh, that you can walk around and look at while you're there. There's a close up of the side of the station, or about 8,000 feet, you notice there. And on the right, a picture of the speeders parked on the uh, SL and RG railroad with some uh, highway signs. You can kind of tell it's at the intersection of 17 and 285 if you're looking to map it. 
there's a mural that's in the town of Antonito um, of the train. Oh, this was an interesting story. <laughs> um, I mentioned that we got there early enough in the morning to uh, <clears throat> see the departure of the steam train. Well, part of what that meant was that the rails weren't particularly warm when we got there. So they, had, they were still uh, sort of from their um, overnight cold, uh, shrunk up point of view. And but while we were there, we were there several hours, the rails heated up. And in one case, on the right-hand side, it's pictured, that became problematic. These chains are draped across the rails to act as stops for the speeders, keep them from going in case the brake lets loose or uh, whatever. And in this case, the chain was draped across a gap in the rails. But while we were there, that gap closed because it, the temperatures were heating up and the rail was expanding. So it became quite a project, as you can see on the left, to get that chain <laughs> pulled up out of, the, out of the rail. Interesting little few moments. Yeah, it looks like now we've got them pulled up and we're getting ready to go head back to Alamosa. There's just a, a bridge we crossed in a little creek or feeder tributary into the river. One of the industries along the SL and RG between Antonito and Alamosa. I don't know if, if it was active or not. I couldn't really tell. It doesn't look real active. Some other sites along the way. I must have been impressed by that tree. I'm not quite sure why. Lahara is uh, one of the little towns between the two. It went by the Lahara station or depot. And now we're back in Alamosa. Uh, another look at uh, some of the equipment that is there uh, awaiting restoration or who knows what, as well as some storage freight cars. And I'm not sure what all was going on there, but. It's quite a yard in Alamosa, and there's a lot, there's a lot there. Um, I mentioned that oftentimes the speeder groups are running on live railroads, and that was certainly the case today, too, with the San Luis and Rio Grande. Uh, it's both the freight railroad and that scenic tourist train railroad. So we, um, we did interact with train movement um, going and coming from Alamosa. Once we got headed down to Antonita, there wasn't any activity down there that day. But there was along, there was up in Alamosa. It's their headquarters, so it makes sense. No matter which way trains are going, they're going to be coming or going from Alamosa. Um, the SLNRG was a railroad formed in 2003. Uh, um, <clears throat> and it's got about 154 miles of what was Denver and Rio Grande Western track um, originally. Alamosa is the center. Um, it goes, the railroad goes east to Walsenburg, which is up over the La Vida Pass through La Vida, the city or town, and on to Walsenburg as an endpoint. It also goes west from Alamosa to South Fork, and it goes, goes south from Alamosa to Antonito, which is what we just did, the trip we just made. Um, at one point from Alamosa, if you go west, you eventually come to a town called Monta Vista uh, on the way to South Fork. And at that point in Monta Vista, the, the San Luis and Rio Grande connects with the San Luis Central, uh, which goes on up to a city called Central in Colorado. And we'll do that um, on our next, uh, in, in a couple of weeks. We're not going to get that far today. And here's another picture of uh, the speeders. I'm not sure who's waiting for who here. Um, but we were um, definitely doing some train movement, train meet movement type stuff at, at this point to stay clear of each other. Um, the SLRNG, well, is, is, is not in good shape as best I can tell. I think they're in bankruptcy court uh, or bankruptcy of, of some sort. 
Um, and I was not able to find what I would have called the most recent update. I don't know really where that stands, um, which is too bad if they can't hold on here. They're the only railroad in this valley other than the little stretch of San Luis Central. Okay, now we're going to head up to um, La Vida. We're going to do what's in the red circle here from Alamosa. And we're going to go east to La Vida, up over the La Vida Pass. And if this map wasn't in the way, Walsenburg, which I mentioned earlier, would be off here to the, to the east. So here we are all set to go and headed out east now from Alamosa towards La Vida Pass and the, and the town of La Vida. Oh, this is a good picture of how these things get transported around, um, typically on trailers. And um, those trailers are such that they tilt up or tilt down at the, at the back end to roll the trailers off and on to the ground, or ideally right onto the rails if, if that's can be jockeyed into position. There's some more of the equipment that is out in Alamosa. There's another shot on the right of the uh, depot building. And now we're on our way. We're outside of Alamosa proper. <clears throat> the car is heading towards the camera, which is east, um, between a couple of sidings full of freight cars. And we're actually positioning ourselves here <clears throat> for another meet. Uh, with another, with a, a full-size train, where you can see where those speeders are pulling off to a siding there, um, along with all those freight cars. Because coming from La Vida direction is this freight train. <clears throat> so now we're back on the road east. Um, we eventually come to a little town called Fort Garland, uh, where we had a little potty break, um, uh, snack shop break. There's just a picture of what the town uh, Central Park area looked like. It's really not much more than crossroads. Oh, this was interesting. On uh, very near Fort Garland, and I don't remember which side, east or west, there's this um, T-33, uh, an Air Force fighter. It was actually the first jet fighter. Um, I, I think Lockheed built it. Um, and uh, there's one of them just on display, and, and I think it's called Veterans Memorial Park. I never really saw much of the park, but this guy was right along the train tracks. And now we, or you see, we're starting to get out of the valley. It's been pretty flat up till now, but now we're starting to climb to La Vida Pass. And uh, much like on any live railroad, there's usually storage cars or cars prepping for going in and out of industry or something. Um, and the same is true here. Beautiful countryside again, a little more rocky, rugged than uh, the climb up to the climax mine was. And the pass, it, it, again, it was probably more of a climb as well. Um, part of the speeder group is considerably higher, as you can tell from this photo, than the rest of the speeder group. <clears throat> and we don't ever really separate all that much. You can generally see everybody all the time, um, or mo at least most of the time when it's open like this. So um, we, the, where I'm standing taking the picture, you can see I've climbed considerably from where the tail end of our group is down below. Oh, how do you like that catch of the, butter, of the uh, bumblebee with the train tracks in the, in the background? <laughs> That's one of my favorite pictures. And uh, this was a stop on the railroad um, where there was an amphitheater uh, to the right and down the hill from where the, the tracks are. I don't think I have a very good picture of the theater itself, but apparently um, the railroad, the scenic 
probably the scenic Rio Grande Railroad, would bring people up here for concerts or whatever, or an evening, and then take them back down. I don't know if that's still going on or not, but it struck me as a pretty good idea. Another pretty substantial cut for the railroad to get through. Beautiful woodsy areas that we cruised through. Look at that. Man, is that pretty or what? Geologists like this kind of stuff too. There was at least one tunnel on this trip um, and we're about to go into it. Uh, that's always fun. That truck, that high rail truck out in front of us um, reminds me that one of the things that generally happens on an excursion is that the host railroad usually provides a guide. Um, physically somebody that goes ahead of the group either on a high rail or another speeder or something uh, <clears throat> to keep us on our toes, keep us out of trouble, point out things, watch for things to help the trip go smoothly. And as usual, it went quite smoothly. There's a couple of nice vista shots of the of the railroad looking at, I'm not sure what these mountain peaks are. Um, I think the one on the left is called West Spanish Peak, uh, but I'm not entirely sure. It's also possible that it's called Sheep Mountain or there's another one, Silver Mountain, uh, and there's another one, Raspberry Mountain, all sort of east of where we are here, um, some north east, some east east, some south east. I'm just not quite sure the orientation of the track here. But they're all quite tall as you can see, particularly the one on the left. There's another siding we're going by with a bunch of tank cars. And now we're coming into the town of La Vida. Welcome to La Vida, home of Doris Tracy. I, I, that was a new name to me. And on the right, uh, you can kind of see a little bit of the downtown. It's, it's very much a, uh, a little touristy kind of town. There's a better picture of it. Lots of gift shops, a couple of eateries like that. That one, the ice cream was actually quite good. If you ever find yourself up there, don't miss an ice cream stop. There happened to be a little music group uh, playing in the park that was there uh, right outside of town or kind of between the tracks and town. Um, so we enjoyed that for a little bit. Enjoyed just staying in the park, resting for a little bit. And uh, <clears throat> we will pick up here in another two weeks uh, for part two of this trip. We're heading back now towards Alamosa from La Vida. Um, and in addition to completing the La Vida round trip, we'll um, head west um, next time to visit the San Luis Central Railroad that goes up to the town of Central. And we'll also hop on over, not by rail, but by by road, trailer the cars, speeders, and, and head on over to the Creed branch of the Denver and Rio Grande, starting at South Fork, I think, is where we start. So that we will do in two weeks, part two of this Colorado Fall Color trip. And in addition, we will look at the Golden Spike, the real Golden Spike anniversary, 150 years that will take place on that day, August 15th, in Strasburg, Colorado. I'm not going to tell you any more. I hope you're intrigued. Um, it will only be a little adjunct to the, the main stuff next time will be this uh, speeder excursion. But, but you don't want to miss this fascinating episode from uh, Strasburg.